All right, so today we're checking out the latest beta of Linux Mint version 22. Of course, this is a new code base that we're dealing with. This is based on Ubuntu 24.04, and our longtime fans of the channel will know that I've had a soft spot for Linux Mint for a long time. In fact, I've been using Linux Mint 21. Dot whatever we're up to uh, for the last uh, two and a half years now. Uh, as my daily driver on this desktop. And uh, so I really love what the Linux Mint uh, project are about, what they do and how they develop. And uh, if you wanna go watch a video about that, I'll link it here in the cards. But today we're gonna be checking out what is new with Linux Mint version 22. And the spoiler is that it's not like there's a whole lot here to talk about on the surface of new and fancy stuff. That's just not Linux Mint style. But there is some stuff going on under the hood that is worth getting excited about, at least for people who are fans of Mint. So let's jump in. Uh, first of all, when it comes to the uh, first impressions and like the welcome screen and installation and all of that, it will all be very familiar. There's no new Ubuntu based uh, or the, the, the new Ubuntu Flutter um, installer that is not present here. It's the same old ubiquity as always, uh, the same color scheme, same theming, same wallpapers, etc. So it's almost indistinguishable on first glance from the older releases of Linux Mint. However, the uh, package support base is obviously up upgraded now due to the newer rebasing of Ubuntu 24.04. And I've got to commend the team for getting this around in a timely-ish fashion. Obviously, Linux Mint always releases things when they're ready. And this, at the time of the recording of this video, is the beta. And usually they will have the beta running for about three weeks or four weeks sometimes to squash bugs before releasing it to the wide open spaces. Uh, so you can go and download the beta for yourself and test it and submit bug reports and stuff of that nature. But you are going to notice that uh, right off the bat, we're running the Linux kernel 6.8, and that's what it will be based on. A key change in Linux Mint 22, as a matter of fact, is that they will now be taking on the hardware enablement stack from Ubuntu for their point releases meaning that the kernel will continue to roll with more recent versions of the kernel as the default version for Linux Mint 22 moving forward, rather than their previous uh, strategy, which was to have the original kernel that came with the LTS version of Ubuntu that Linux Mint was based on. And then they would have a more up-to-date kernel for people to upgrade to if they wanted to, but it was never forced on anyone. They would just stick with that LTS kernel. So back with the last se uh, series of Linux Mint releases, they had a 5.15 kernel as the default, which brought a lot of new users headaches, especially if they were running new uh, newer hardware. Now in the world of YouTube and tech influencers, uh, newer hardware is the norm. And so when new users would try out Linux Mint for the first time, especially on their tech channels and stuff, and then have hardware issues, most of the time it was due to that older kernel. So I think in the long run, this is a good move to move with a more up-to-date kernel and keep that kernel up to date so that when people download the mainline edition of Linux Mint 22 point whatever, they'll be up with a more recent kernel than having to force that update themselves. And it's one less step for experienced users to have to do. Another thing worth mentioning that they have done to try and save on the uh, how much space the default installation takes is the language packs. When it comes to Linux Mint in the past, uh, their, their install footprint is surprisingly small. Like if you look at the disk usage of a, uh, of a brand new Mint install. I think it's just a little under nine gigs, which is pretty small by modern standards. And the ISO are also pretty small to download compared to Ubuntu, which is swelling out to almost four gigabytes at this point. But one of the changes that they've made to try and keep the, the install footprint smaller is to limit the amount of languages that are available uh, out, of the, out of the gate after installation. So, as you can see, because I live in Australia, we've got the English language uh, enabled by default, and they do have a selection of languages that'll be available on the ISO ready to install. The difference here is that they're not installing a bunch of other languages as well. So rather than having a bunch of language packs you don't need, those will now no longer be installed by default, which I think is a smart move. A significant shift that's gone on in the back end between the release of 22.04 and 24.04, the Ubuntu base that Linux Mint is based on, is the implementation of GTK4 across the board. And the theming, uh, the theming team at Mint have uh, taken it upon themselves to update their theming for GTK4. Uh, toolkits. So hopefully that means that uh, any uh, apps that you install that require GTK4 will look a little more at home on Linux Mint. Another key uh, improvement that they've made is the performance of the software manager. It now 
opens uh, almost instantaneously, which was a not exactly a big bugbear of mine, but it was definitely noticeable in previous releases. You'll notice how it's taking a minute here to generate the cache because it's the first time in this virtual machine that I am loading up the software manager, but you will notice just how quick that did uh, open up. And that's an improvement. Um, so as far as the software manager itself, the big change that they've made this time around is in service of keeping the uh, installation of apps secure. And the way that they're doing this is that I think Mint has made the right call of having FlatHub enabled out of the box. You can install applications from FlatHub uh, using Flatpak out of the box. However, they have enabled an option here to show unverified flatbacks because out of the box, the default way that flatpacks are managed on Linux Mint through the software manager is that only verified flatpacks will show up. So when you click on the flatpack uh, filter, you're going to notice a bunch of apps that are available here to download and install from in the software manager. These are only ones that have been verified by the apps developers. So that means unofficial uh, packagings, for example, uh, the packaging of Google Chrome is not done by Google. And so it won't show up here in the available flat packs that you have to install. However, if you do want to have this enabled, you can go in and check the box in preferences. I think overall, this is a more secure way of vetting the quality of packages that are available for, especially for new users to install. And it's really not that hard to go in and flick this box. I do think barring any ratings or comments from those unverified packages isn't a great idea in the long run because uh, it is one of the ways that people could let other users know if a package was not either uh, packaged correctly or whether it was an app that it shouldn't be. Um, so I think that could be something that could be looked into in the future. But I think for now, this is a more secure option out of the box. And I think between the uh, large repository that Ubuntu has, plus flat packs that are available on FlatHub that are verified, gives users plenty of options here. And I don't think that will threaten anything in the near future. When it comes to overall hardware support and display scaling, this is something that uh, Linux Mint and the Cinnamon desktop in general has improved quite a bit over the years. Uh, you will notice that here on this 1080p resolution, I am actually running this at 125% uh, and fractional scaling is something that isn't enabled out of the box necessarily. It is a simple toggle if you want to um, enable that set of uh, features, but the feature once it is enabled is only really considered, I, I guess, experimental uh, on X or on X11. Uh, which is still the default display server for Linux Mint. So that means that one-to-one -to -one, uh, touchpad gestures are still uh, not available on X, uh, on X11, but they are available through the touch egg backend. Uh, just means that it basically ties a multi-touch gesture to a key binding to do a certain um, action on the desktop as opposed to one-to-one -to -one like it is on Wayland. Um, but the support for Wayland is chugging along. And so in the background right now, you do actually have uh, an experimental Wayland session. It's actually been around since the last uh, point release of Linux Mint 21. And, uh, and that's great to see. I think we'll continue to see more Wayland development and the fractional scaling on that um, will also pick up improvements along the way. They also did improve the, uh, the high pixel density display settings for things like the, uh, the boot sequence and the, um, and the Plymouth bootloader screen so that that actually takes up the appropriate amount of screen real estate as opposed to being very, very tiny and the, the text in the console being basically illegible. Uh, so that's good to see. Another significant change was that the default sound server on uh, Linux Mint is now Pipewire. This was one of the last remaining holdouts of some of the newer technology that had moved over into uh, most distributions by now. So uh, rest assured, Pipewire is now the default audio backend for Linux Mint 22. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes over this bug reporting round, whether that causes any issues. So far, so good. Also building on some of the work in the previous Linux Mint release, uh, the actions that you have on a right click menu have, are customizable and you can download further actions if you want those. Uh, and they're built directly into the cinnamon spices mechanism. So the same way that you would go and download new desk 
uh, widgets, desktop widgets or applets for the system tray or something like that, you can now go and download action menus. Now this was something you could do that they implemented in the last point release of Linux Mint, but now they've also added a layout editor. So you can actually arrange these how you want them. And it's a much more intuitive way of customizing your right click menus in the Cinnamon desktop, which is pretty nice. Again, great power user to touch. Finally, when it comes to community and support, they've made a key change here in terms of uh, discontinuing the IRC client uh, that they used to ship with Linux Mint. It previously was known as HexChat, and they would use that as a way to uh, that you could quickly find support and community in Linux Mint. But IRC as a protocol is getting quite ancient now. And so they recognize the need to ship a matrix chat client that would quickly drop users into a uh, support community kind of chat space that's much more aligned with what modern chat expectations are. Think things like Slack or Discord. And so they have uh, quickly put together a web app for Matrix and they automatically link you in with the support room, I guess, or whatever you wanna call it, uh, for quickly getting help in uh, Matrix. So it is basically just a web app that loads up and dumps you straight in where you wanna be. And actually on that note, uh, they have made just a couple of intuitive uh, improvements here to the web apps uh, little tool that they have. Um, basically just arranging some of the buttons more appropriately so that when you have a web app, it looks just a little bit more native, I guess, than what it did before. But as you can see, this drops you into the uh, the matrix chat space where you can jump in and get support if you need it uh, on Mint 22. And the rest of it is kind of a standard issue, I guess. You've got a fresh new batch of wallpapers. You can go and grab previous wallpapers from other Linux Mint releases if you're so inclined. But overall, Linux Mint 22 is shaping up to be a very nice release. I think the things that I am most uh, impressed by is once again, the iterative stable improvements that Linux Mint make, and they're always slowly and carefully integrating new technology into their new releases so that their users can still have a modern Linux desktop experience, uh, but one that is well tested and stable and isn't going to break anyone's workflow, or at least that's the hope. So, I guess we'll see how this beta goes over the next uh, few weeks. What I am curious to do is to compare the Cinnamon desktop in its current iteration version 6.2 with the version 6.1 of Plasma that, ha that came out about a month ago from the time of the recording of this video. Uh, let me know if you wanna see that in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.